Hi guys, my name is Timothy Tally and welcome to my channel. And here are my three top favorite recipes from the Avatar The Last Airbender Cookbook from the Air Temple. Air Nomads? Air Nation. From the Air Nomads. Air Nomads. Here are my top three favorite recipe from the Air Nomads. Let's go. The first thing we're gonna make is Air Temple Sampa. And it only requires just a few ingredients. The main one being toasted barley rice. So we're gonna take it over to the stove, toast it for about 10 minutes. Trust me, the smell that is nutty and sweet and robust is going to come before it actually starts becoming like that toasted brown golden look that we like. But then you're just going to take this, let it toast for 10 minutes, take it over to your blender, blend it, and it's already done. Now let's go make the balanced butter tea. The balanced butter tea is simple. You're gonna be making it with pu'er tea, which is gonna be a smoky, almost charcoal um, smell to it. It is great, it's literally one of my favorites. It is hand-picked. You're gonna boil this in water for about, uh, let's say three to five minutes. Take it out, take it over to the blender again, pour it inside the blender, add in about two tablespoons of butter, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt, and then you're gonna blend it until it gets frothy like this. After that, you're just going to incorporate the balanced butter tea inside of the toasted barley, now rice flour, and you're just gonna incorporate it until it becomes a soft ball. And there you have it, as simple and as easy as air temple sampa. I learned that this is actually a Tibetan like food staple. It is very interesting because the toasted barley, um, it seems more like an old fashioned granola bar to me, where it doesn't have all the extra like raisins and bits and you know pumpkin seeds and things like that. But it's still nice. I really enjoyed making this because this was just so interesting and it's so satisfying. It's a little bit more thick, but I think the balanced butter tea really helps loosen it out. I will admit the balanced butter tea is an acquired taste on its own it's a little bit too much to me you're literally drinking butter and leaf juice to me and i'm i'm still gotta get used to that this recipe is the chrysanthemums and shiitake dumplings one of the best recipes in this entire cookbook first we're gonna start off with an onion some shiitake mushrooms of course four eggs gyoza wrappers make sure they're round and a surprise ingredient chrysanthemums i know you're thinking why is it a surprise when it says that literally on the recipe title i don't know i just didn't know that you could eat like the whole chrysanthemum flower the leaves give off a peppery taste to them but we're gonna pull off their leaves here and make sure they are washed i literally bought this at walmart for 9.95 i thought it was a steal you're already gonna need about three cups of uh, chrysanthemum leaves but i am actually having my recipe because i made too many dumplings last time and yes there is such thing as too many dumplings next we're gonna saute our shiitake mushrooms and onions and then we're gonna set those aside and then another plan we are just going to fry all of our eggs and then we're just going to be blanching our chrysanthemum leaves. We're just gonna put them in boiling water at like 30 seconds to one minute, take them out as quickly as possible, and then we're gonna blanch them in cold water, squeeze out the water, so simple, so easy. Okay, now we assemble all of it together. Now you're gonna take your blender, all the ingredients, the mushrooms and onions, the eggs, the chrysanthemum leaves, and then you're gonna blend until well combined. It's gonna look something like this. Now, with folding a freaking dumpling, I know there are a lot of methods, but I always choose the easiest one, and I think this is called like the half moon wrap. So all I do is just take a little bit of water and just squeeze the sides together so it looks like this. So cute, so pretty. And then I do try sometimes if I want to get all fancy, I try to do like the rippling effect on the edge, but they always end up breaking, so I just kind of keep to the half moon look. And then after you get a few of them, it's time to steam them. Put them in my little steamer, nice and cozy. Steam them for about 15 minutes. I only did 10 because I don't mind like the gooey taste of the dumpling wrap. And then while that is steaming, we are just going to make a quick dumpling sauce, which only takes soy sauce, rice vinegar, a little bit of green onions if you're feeling fancy, a little bit of ginger if you're feeling fancier, and then our dumplings are ready. Look at them, they are so good. There are a couple different variations that they have too, instead of the chrysanthemums that that puts you off a little bit. They also have ginger and cabbage, that one was good. They also have a potato 
one. They said there was even one that with milk that I've never tasted, but I'm super excited about. These dumplings are so good and they are absolutely perfect. Last but not least, y'all know I had to try Aang's favorite egg tart. Let's go, starting with the crust. In your blender, you're gonna add one cup of all-purpose flour, one cup of toasted barley flour, and a half cup, and I believe the secret ingredient of this delicious crust, a half cup of hazelnut flour. After that, you're going to add in some sugar, some cornstarch, and a little bit of salt. After that, you're gonna blend it until it is well combined. After that, you're going to be putting in 3 fourths cup of cold butter. And you're going to be doing this in chunks. So I just added it in until it became kind of like a grainy texture. It's going to be really moist, <laughs> like this. And then we're just going to put our dough into some saran wrap and let it stay into the fridge for about 30 minutes to an hour. I just put some saran wrap down, threw in my dough, wrapped it up, and then put it into the freezer. Okay. Now we're gonna make the custard part. And let me tell you, it requires great patience. <laughs> now in a bowl, we are just going to take one whole egg, two egg yolks, some sugar, about a half a cup. And then we are just going to whisk that together with a little bit of salt until well combined. Set that aside. Let's go to the stove. On the stove, you are just going to choose a half cup of any nut milk that you like. It said soy milk, but I used almond milk just because I had that on hand. You're going to add a couple of teaspoons of cornstarch, and then you're just going to whisk that together and let it come to a boil. Put it in a measuring cup, and this is the hardest part. Slowly, very slowly, you're going to pour a little bit of that heated nut milk mixed with cornstarch and mix it into your egg. You're tempering your eggs, so you're trying to make this custard but not cook your eggs. After a while, it's gonna look like this. I swear Satan woke up early just to do that to me. Now that our dough has rested, we're just gonna lay that down on saran wrap. And then we're just gonna put another blanket of saran wrap onto it. And if y'all saw my other video, you guys already know I am still poor, so I don't have a rolling pin yet. I'm just gonna use the saran wrap roll, and it works just fine. Now you're gonna roll that out into about the size of your tart. The recipe says these are gonna be mini tarts, but I decided just to make one big one. I rolled it out, I put it inside my tart tin. You don't have to do this, but I did. I just wanted to strain it just in case to get out some of the bubbles, tap it a little bit. I even got a spoon and started scraping off some of the air bubbles that I saw, just so it could be nice and velvety on top. And then it's time to bake it in the oven for 15 minutes. And then when it comes out, it looks like this. I'm willing to go through any creepy crawler just to get a slice of this egg tart. My goodness, I just impressed myself. I'm not saying I deserve an award. I'm not saying I deserve a key to the city. I am saying that I'm pretty proud of my egg tart. This one is Annie's favorite. It was really good. I don't know why mine bubbled. It bubbled a little bit, but no, I'll think. I'll see you, A. So you, all right. All right guys, those are the three recipes that I recommend from the Air Nomads, from the Atlas for the Lost Ever cookbook. Tell me which one was your favorite? Was it the chrysanthemums dumplings? Or was it the egg tart? Or was it the Air Temple? Is, I think it's Sampa or Tazma. I think they all have something to offer. I really liked doing the Air Nomads because it had so few ingredients that you could find anywhere at like, your local store. So I just think this is a great one that they start off in the beginning of the book because it gets your feet wet until you get further into the book, especially the Water Tribe. <laughs> so if you enjoy this cookbook, let me know in the comments below. Tell me which one was your favorite recipe. If you have the cookbook, I want to know what you think. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. So long, Cotman. Thank you.